In this video, I will teach you how to take a wicked polynomial like this one and figure out the end behavior, the maximum number of x-intercepts, and the maximum number of turning points. Now, um, one thing to really focus on is only the highest degree term is going to matter. So when I say highest degree, I'm talking about the term that has the highest exponent. So this has the highest exponent, so really none of the rest of this is going to matter for our purposes right now. So you can just forget about all of this stuff. All right, so focus on that. Now, um, the next thing that you need to understand is um, let's think about the patterns. If I have uh, x squared, we know what x squared looks like. It is a parabola like this. Um, so you can visualize the end behavior. If I have x to the third power, that gives you a wave like this and you can see the end behavior there. Um, if I have x to the fourth power, you might not have memorized this one, but I'll just tell you it's kind of like a w. Um, and you can see the end behavior here. So let me point out a couple of things to you. First of all, notice that in all of these cases, the right-hand side is facing up. Um, now, on the other hand, when it's even, the left-hand side is facing up also, all right? That's, that's what you see for 2 um, and for 4. So when it's even, both ends are facing up. But if it's odd, then the left side is facing down. One other thing to point out is that if I were to stick a negative sign on this, all right, if I do negative x squared, that turns it upside down. So it's just uh, the exact opposite. If I do negative x to the third power, then that's going to be like this. If I do negative x to the fourth power, that's going to be like this. Okay, so um, that should be enough to help us with the end behavior. All that matters is whether or not this is even or odd and whether or not it's a reflection over the x-axis. So uh, looking at this number, I see the 5 at the end. This is odd. That tells me that it's going to, going to have the end behavior of a just like a cubic function. All odd functions have the same type of end behavior. Um, however, I see the negative in front. So that tells me that it's going to be the upside down version of the end behavior. So this is what I'm picturing in my mind as I look at this. Um, so as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches what? So as we go towards the left, the function rises, so f of x approaches positive infinity. Um, as x approaches positive infinity, in other words, as we go to the right, the function goes down, so f of x approaches negative infinity. So that's going to be the end behavior. All right, now let's talk about um, x-intercepts and turning points. Um, okay, so again, when we have x squared, you know that that is a parabola. So the maximum number of x in uh, the maximum number of x-intercepts would be two. Boom and boom. That's the maximum number. If I have x to the third power, or any kind of a cubic, um, the, uh, some cubic functions have this type of shape. 
All right, uh, I know that x to the third power, just literally the parent function, it just has a point of inflection. It doesn't have this much of a wave to it. But if I put some other stuff with it, I can get a cubic function like this. So the maximum number of x-intercepts would be three. One, two, three. Remember we talked about um, x to the fourth power um, and how that can make a w shape sometimes. And so let's look at the maximum number of x-intercepts. One, two, three, four. So I'm sure you can see the connection between the degree, uh, meaning the exponent, and the maximum number of x-intercepts. So um, let's talk about x to the n power. Um, if the exponent is n, then the maximum number of x-intercepts will be n. All right, so in this case, um, in this case, the exponent is 4,875. So the maximum number of x-intercepts will be 4,008. Okay, that's that ink is thicker than I wanted it to be. OCD demands that I switch fonts. 4,000. 875. Now let's talk about the turns. Um, in fact, uh, maybe I'll just take out the, the line that represented the x-axis for a second. Let's talk about the number of turns. So for x squared, it has one bend in it right there. For x to the third power, it has two bends in it. One bend and another bend. Um, for x to the fourth power, there's I see a bend here, a bend here, and a bend here. Can you see the pattern that's happening now? Um, when the power is two, there's one turn. When the power is three, there are two turns. When the power is four, there are three turns. So can you see that there's one less turn than the exponent? So if we had an exponent of n, there would be n minus 1 turns. So again, in this case, the exponent is 4,875. So the maximum number of turns should be 1 less. It should be 4,874 will be the maximum number. So that is how this works. So just hold that in the back of your mind as we do part B. So again, remember, only the highest exponent term is going to matter. So focus your eyes on that. And uh, notice that this is even, um, like a parabola is even. So the end behavior is going to be just like a parabola would be. Um, and it's positive. There's a positive leading coefficient, so it will be upward facing. So that means the end behavior as x approaches uh, negative infinity, f of x approaches. On the left, this thing is rising, so that's positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches. That means on the right, and on the right, it is also rising. So that's, again, going to be positive infinity. The maximum number of x-intercepts will be 4, because the exponent is 4. And the maximum number of turning points will be 3. It will just be 1 less than the exponent. OK? Now, um, for this one, this is in factored form. Uh, but if you ignore the constants, all right, ignore the 1 and the 3 for a minute. Can you see that what we really have is x times x times x? So if you multiply all that together, you see that um, the degree is 3 we're getting x to the third power would be the highest exponent. So um, that tells us that the maximum number of x-intercepts 
will be 3. And that tells us that the maximum number of turning points will be 2 because it has to be 1 less. Now let's talk in behavior. Um, we know that cubic functions have this type of n behavior. So this is the sketch you should be thinking of as you say the n behavior. Um, this is positive, so that's why I'm doing the positive version. Um, so as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. So as we go towards the left, this graph is falling, that means negative infinity. Uh, as x approaches positive infinity, that means as we go to the right, the graph rises. Um, so that's going to be positive infinity. All right, now how about the actual zeros? They didn't ask us this on a previous problem, but for the actual zeros, we can take the factored form and set each of these equal to zero. All right, so by setting um, x equal to zero, well, that just gives us zero. If I set x minus one equal to zero, that's gonna give me x equals one. All right, and I'm just gonna put one. And if I set x plus three equal to zero, that's gonna give me x equals negative three. So the actual zeros are 0, 1, and negative 3. All right, let us move on to the last one. Okay, so for a moment, ignore the negative 1 and the 3 and see what we would get. So this would give us negative x to the, let's see, well, okay, let me go one more step. So um, please understand that without these constants, uh, of course I have the negative x squared right here, so there you go. Uh, but then this parentheses has no exponent, so that would just be x. Um, but then this parentheses has a cubed on it. So this would be x to the third power. So I have x squared times x times x to the third power. So what is that equal to? Well, x squared times x is x to the third power. Um, times x to the third power is going to be x to the sixth power. All right, so there's a total of six x's here. Um, let's not forget the negative sign in the front. So I have negative. Now, this is even. So normally, that would mean that it will have the same end behavior as a parabola does. Okay? Um, the only thing is, I have this negative in the front, so it's going to be up upside down. So the end behavior is going to be like an upside down parabola. So the end behavior is going to be like, I'm putting a little squiggle here to show that who knows what's happening in the middle, but on the ends, it's going to be pointing down. So that's enough to say the end behavior. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches. Um, on the left, this is going down, so that's negative infinity. And then as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches, well, the, on the right, it's also going down. So that's going to be another negative infinity. So there's your end behavior. Um, now, the maximum number of x-intercepts will come from this exponent that we got. So that's going to be 6. And then the maximum number of turning points will be 5. It's just going to be 1 less than that. Now, for the actual zeros, I'm going to uh, put the negative 1 and the 3 back. So all we have to do is set each of these factors equal to 0. So um, if I set negative x squared equal to 0, um, 
that's just going to give me x equals 0. If I set x minus 1 equal to 0, of course, adding 1 to both sides, that's going to give me 1. All right, what if I set x plus 3 cubed equal to 0? x plus 3 cubed. Whoops. Squared by mistake. Um, it really doesn't matter that, that this is cubed. The first thing I would do is I would do the cube root of both sides. And that would turn this into x plus 3. But the cube root of 0 is still 0. So I'm still going to get x equals negative 3 just like I would if it wasn't cubed. So having this cubed really doesn't affect um, the zeros. All right, so I'm going to have a negative 3. So these are the actual zeros of the graph, 0, 1, and negative 3.